Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Present value and future value calculations with the help and use of tables. Problem number two. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're down here in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Within the practice worksheet, we're way over here in column AC. That's where our tables are going to be. Before we go into them, however, let's take a look at what we have done thus far. You don't need to have worked the prior practice problems to look at the table, but it's useful to get an idea of how you can calculate this a few different ways as we do get into the tables. We also want to think about how we can move and maneuver around this Excel worksheet. So I'm going to put the cursor back down. I'm going to go all the way to the left over here. Note that I have some hidden columns on the right because it should start at column A and I'm starting on column O. So what I'm going to do is put my cursor on column O, left click, drag on over to the left as far as I can go, right click on the selected area, and then unhide, unhide. And so there we have it. Now I'm going to drag all the way to the left, see if it unhid everything. There we have it. So now we're back to column A here. You'll recall our situation was we have the yearly earnings percent of an investment, meaning an investment we expect to be increasing annually by 12%. We ask the question, then, how long will it take for the investment to double? We got an approximate answer by using the rule of 72 without even knowing the actual investment amount. 72 divided by 12 gives us the approximation of 6. Then we assumed an investment amount of 2,000, knowing then that if it was to double, it would be at 4,000, asking how long it would take to get to the 4,000, the rule of 72, saying around six years. We did it then with a running balance calculation and saw that that was indeed true, that in between six and seven, that's when we got to uh, between three and 4,000, three, nine, and four, 4,000. And we get to see our interest calculations in this format, which is, gives us a little bit more detail. We, did, we then did the calculation using the future value and the goal seek method, the present value with the goal seek method, and the number of periods functions to get an idea of those functions. We did a similar type of calculation with the Excel mathematic, I'm sorry, just simply the mathematical formulas for the present value, getting the results here, and the future value getting the results here as well. Now we're going to take a look at the use of the tables. Now note the use of the tables is going to be similar. We have a similar kind of issue that we did with the present value and future value calculations because you'll recall what we're missing here, the data that we are missing is going to be the number of periods. And when I look at the calculations that we're going to be considering, present value and future value calculations, those are solving, of course, for the future value or present value. The number of periods is going to be an item within that algebraic calculation that we're basically solving for. So you could write it out algebraically as we saw down here and then solve for n when using something like the mathematical equation. You might say, well, how can I do that with the tables then? If I'm using the tables, then how can I kind of back into the number of n periods when I'm using tables? Because typically with the tables, I would be using the appropriate tables to, to take the amount from the table to calculate the, the present or future value. So let's see how we can do this. This is a common kind of book problem. Also, no, just remember that the tables were quite useful before we had things like financial calculators and Excel commonly. And then you'd need to use a table. The tables can help you with calculations much more quickly. And they're still used oftentimes for test questions. So if you take this formally in a course, then they might try to take your financial calculator away or your Excel away and make you use tables. So it's still useful to understand the tables. It's useful to understand kind of how they're constructed, especially if you're going to be doing this in a school type problem setting. So when you think about the tables, there's four tables for present value and future value that one you want to consider, two for present values, two for future values. So when you're thinking about a present value calculation, you got to make sure that you're picking the right one of the two. Each category of present value and future value has two categories within it which is going to be of one and then an annuity. So you have present value tables of one and then present value tables of an annuity, the annuity tables representing multiple series of kind of payments, whereas the present value of one, which is what we're looking at here, just involving the interest on one kind of component. Future value, same thing. You got future value of one, future value of an annuity, the annuity being a series of payments. 
So we're not dealing with a series of payments here. We're dealing with our one with our one number, the difference between the two not being multiple payments, but being interest. So we're using present or future value of one tables. So we can use either table. Let's first take a look at the the present value table here. Note that up top, you got the percentages on the left hand side, you've got the the periods, the periods to us are years. And if we're using the periods of years, then the rates up top are going to need to be considered to be yearly rates. So just realize that those two things have to match. They happen to be yearly for us here, but that's not necessarily the case because the periods can be whatever the period is that it's kind of compounding at. So it might be monthly. Some bonds would be like semi-monthly possibly that you would have the periods here. So these periods could represent something other than years, such as half years, semi-years, six-month periods, in other words, or monthly. However, the, the interest rates then up top would also have to reflect the rate per period. And remember that whenever you're talking about interest rates, when someone quotes a rate to you, even if they're talking about a monthly rate on something like your car payment, which you know you make monthly or something like that, if they say it's going to be 7%, then they're usually talking about a yearly rate there, even though you're going to be paying it monthly, because yearly rates is kind of the convention in a similar way as to if I was to say what someone's salary is, I would probably if I said like 70,000 or something, I'm talking a year, I don't have to say a year, that's kind of the convention. The reason it's part of the convention is that the rates for a yearly rate are somewhere between one and 100 generally. Whereas if you're talking about monthly rates, or if you're talking about semi monthly or semi annual rates, six month rates, then you're going to start talking about rates that aren't even. And they're going to start talking about rates that are going to be less, you know, smaller type of rates, which are harder to communicate. And they're also harder to make tables with. So if you're dealing with book problems, they're less likely to deal with problems that are monthly kind of calculations because they don't fit nicely into a table because the table is not going to have the rates that are that small. But obviously in practice, you, you, would, you could use those because you would be using Excel, which can handle those types of calculations quite easily. So that's going to be the idea. Now, what we have here is that is the how many percent the percent that we have is 12%. So we know we're going to be in the 12% column way over here. And what we're going to just look for is, is the point in time, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. So there we have it. And we're looking for the point in time that, that we get to the proper decimal. So we're looking, we know what the decimal amount should be. If it's a present value calculation, then we're imagining that we're starting in the future, which we're talking about something that doubled. So if it was $2,000 and it doubled, we're starting at 4,000. We're thinking about the percent that we would multiply it back by to get to the answer of 2,000. So that would be 0.5, obviously. 0.5 would be the percent that we're looking for, the decimal that we're looking for. So I know it's in column 12. I'm, I need 0.5 as the amount. And then I'm looking to see what the periods will be on the left-hand side. So if I go down to column 12, I'm going to say, all right, where does 0.5 happen? And it looks like it happens somewhere between 6 and 7. So, so there it is, somewhere between 6 and 7. Over here, we got from, from 0.5 to 0.4523. So we would think, okay, the periods in years have to be somewhere between 6 and 7 which of course it is, it was 6.12. Same thing for the future value table. If you use the future value table, we could, we could use the same kind of concept. Let me pull this table down here. It's tables all squished up. The table's all squished up in the other table. So this is the future value table. Same thing, rates are up top, periods on the left-hand side. This time we're starting at the 2000. We're trying to see what would be the, the number down here that would get it to double, which of course would be two. That, so we're looking for the column number 12 again that would get us the number in the middle here of 2 because that's the, rate, that's the amount that would be needed for it to double. And then we'll see the related period on the left-hand side. So if we look at column 12, we go, okay, where's the, where does it get to 2? And it happens sometime between period 6, year 6, and year 7. It goes from point uh, 1.7938 to 2.2107. So right there between year six and seven, somewhere between there, that's where that's what we're looking for, the, the doubling rate, which again, of course, is the proper answer because that would approximate the 6.12. Now, note that this, this is a problem if you're looking at 
uh, you know, portions of a period, that's something the table's not good at dealing with. That's a limitation of the table. So the big benefit of the table these days is often for test questions and a test question that's going to limit you to tables will oftentimes then be using nice round numbers and be using then numbers that are going to be uh, yearly type of number calculations. If they, if they then move to Excel or if they then or a, a financial calculator, then you might have rates that deal with months and you really got to kind of understand the relationship between these these periods and and the percentages as we'll talk about possibly in uh, in future presentations whenever you're talking about something that's not a yearly kind of thing and you need to kind of understand the convention of someone saying something is a yearly rate even though you're you're calculating it monthly so then you got to you got to take that into consideration when you do a monthly type of calculation